Crash Team Racing Nitro Field has a total of 48 PlayStation trophies, and the Platinum Trophy has only been obtained by 0.5% of all players. My goal is to obtain the Platinum Trophy in under 7 hours and 30 minutes. Before I start the run, I go into the Options menu to turn on the Skip Intro Cutscenes feature. This automatically skips every track's intro and saves a lot of time. The first thing I do to kick off the run is go into the Limit Battle mode on the Nitro Court Arena, toggle the lives to 3, and set the items to only have invisibility and the super boost. This is because for one of the trophies, I need to use every power up while having 10 Wumpa Fruit, and these two power ups are only available in battle mode. I also need to win one of every battle mode, so using two controllers, I quickly win each mode. For limit battle and last card driving, I play these on Nitro Court, since player one and two spawn very close to each other. And for capture the flag, crystal grab, and steal the bacon, I play on lab basement, since this is the smallest map and requires the shortest distance to drive between the flags and collect every crystal. During last card driving, I shoot the other player with all three rockets from the triple rocket power-up and get the Can't Hide From Me trophy. After winning every battle mode, I get the Dominator trophy. Now it's time for the silly yet difficult part of the run, which is to beat the adventure mode on hard difficulty. Before that, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure you've heard of Raid before. It's a beautiful turn-based RPG with awesome looking champions, sick boss fights, player versus player action. But what's new? There's a frickin' Hydra boss, baby. This ferocious monster has six heads, including the Head of Blight, which loves to use poison attacks, making it hard for you to hit the boss, but it's weak to fire-based attacks, so make sure to use champions with the HP burn ability. There's also the Head of Suffering. Hey, that's me. This head is all about making you suffer, and comes with an ability called Pain Link, where if you deal damage to the head, you take damage too. So how the hell are you supposed to beat this thing? Well, you'll need some champions that can take care of that Pain Link debuff so you don't get affected by it. It's not going to be easy though, and it'll require a lot of strategy to beat the Hydra boss and other bosses of this game. And this level of difficulty is something I really like about this game. You can get a free legendary champion, Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, by logging into the game on seven different days between August 22nd and October 23rd. Raid is also introducing a new champion rarity, Mythical. Mythical champions can use the new metamorph mechanic to change between two different forms, and each form has a different type. For example, you can swap from a damage-dealing knight to a flaming angel of healing. That's pretty rad if you ask me. New players can also unlock a free epic champion, Stagnite, and a skin for him designed by JonTron by using code JTSKIN before October 7. You can also scan the QR code or click the link in the description to obtain this free starter pack worth $30. Good luck taking down the Hydra. You'll need it. And now, back to our regularly scheduled scheduled programming. During a normal playthrough of this game, we typically play on easy mode to minimize the AI's ability to spam items, but on the hard difficulty, not only is the CPU more aggressive with items, but they drive much faster and use the warp orb and clock power-ups, which is not possible in the other difficulties. I'm also doing the 100% playthrough on the same file to save time, so this makes things even harder for me. Before starting the adventure playthrough, I customized the paint job of my cart and obtained the That's How I Roll trophy. It's also important that I select the speed driving style. This basically minimizes the speed of my cart, making it go way faster than all of the other driving styles. The main drawback of this driving style is that my turning speed is severely nerfed, but because of this game's brake turning mechanic, the turning stat doesn't really matter all that much. My goal for adventure mode is to get all the trophies by winning each race, getting every CTR token by collecting the letters C, T, and R in a track and winning the race, and getting every relic by finishing a stage within a certain amount of time, while breaking numbered crates that can pause the time temporarily. The adventure mode starts with Crash Cove, and by performing the shortcut I receive the Puddle Hopper Trophy. This is the first of many shortcut related trophies in the game. Later in the course I perform a mini turbo while on top of a turbo pad, and this gets me the Super Boost Trophy. Soon after that I get zapped by my first warp orb and lose my reserves. Speaking of reserves, this is the perfect chance for me to explain how the reserve system works. In CTR Nitro Fueled, there is a hidden reserve system, where your goal is to maintain reserves as long as possible to keep your flame as long as possible. There are multiple forms of fire in this game, and each one makes your cart's base speed faster. There's normal fire, which you can get from doing mini turbos or getting enough hang time. There's sacred fire, which is a big red flame that you can get from driving over turbo pads. And finally, there's ultra sacred fire, which is a blue flame that you can get from driving over a super turbo pad. With blue fire, you can go at ludicrous speed, and if you maintain your reserves properly, you can maintain your fire throughout the entire race without losing it. There are multiple ways to get reserves. The the main way is by doing mini turbos while drifting. You want to make sure to get as many perfect boosts as possible by boosting after the meter on the bottom right is filled up past the last line. You 
You can also get reserves by driving over a turbo pad, getting a hang time turbo, or using a boost canister power up. You can lose your reserves by bonking into a wall, getting hit by an item, or using the brakes. However, there's actually a way to keep all of your reserves while braking, and that is by holding down on the D-pad. By holding down and using the brakes, you can make extremely sharp turns on the ground and in the air without losing any reserves at all. It takes a while to master this, but once you do, it feels really good. This mechanic will be very crucial for getting a sub-730 in this category, especially on hard mode. After I win my first race in adventure mode, I earn the Off to a Good Start trophy. Next I go to Ruse Tubes, and this was a bit of a struggle to say the least. What the heck? Oh my god. Stop! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> this is why we don't usually speedrun on hard mode, by the way. Oh my god! However, lap 3 was great, and I obtained the Unstoppable Trophy for maintaining my boost for a whole lap. Next up is Mystery Caves, and by winning the race without using any items, I earn the Natural Trophy. After that, I go to Sewer Speedway, and by using the shortcut, I obtain the Half Pipe Karting Trophy. Our first boss is Ripper Roo. My goal here is to win the race against Roo without getting hit by any of his TNTs, which is easy as long as I can pass him early at the beginning of the race, which I do successfully. Upon winning the race, I obtain the Expert Dodger Trophy and the Crazier Than Ripper Roo Trophy. With Ripper Roo defeated, I proceed to collect all of the CTR tokens and relics from Hub one. In Sewer Speedway, I drove under and over the letter T and had to start all over, losing 1 minute and 26 seconds. These letters can be quite finicky, and making too many of these mistakes can make sub-730 impossible. On my second pass through of the track, I obtained the T on my first try and then hit an opponent with a thrown beaker to obtain the Alchemist Trophy. After winning the race, I also obtained the Spare Change Trophy for winning my first CTR challenge. Next up is the Relic Race. Because the Platinum Trophy only requires me to 100% the event mode, I only need to get the Sapphire Relics on each track. This means I can ignore all of the time craze and just drive like I normally do, since the Sapphire Relics are pretty easy to obtain. To keep this video from being too long, I won't be talking about the Relic Races too much, although I do obtain the Sprinter Trophy for winning my first Relic Race in Adventure Mode. Throughout each of the hub areas, there are purple CTR tokens to collect by getting all of the crystals on a specific battle mode stage. To learn the most optimal routes, I study the Crystal Challenges world record by Martin IOV, who is way too good at this game. <laughs> After collecting all of the crystals on Skull Rock, I obtain the Arena Explorer Trophy. I also quit out after every Crystal Challenge to skip the long podium animation that appears afterward. More on these podium animations later. During the Crash Cove CTR challenge, I get hit by a TNT. By jumping repeatedly, I get the TNT off of my head and obtain the Get Off Me trophy. However, I decided to be stupid and fish for the Photo Finish trophy, which requires you to finish a race with less than 0.3 seconds between you and second place. This attempt didn't work out for me and I lost another minute and a half. Go! Go! Oh, I... really? <laughs> During my second attempt, I earned the Burning Rubber Trophy for doing my 500th Drift Boost, and then I failed the race again. I got hit by so many items and couldn't really do much about it. This is really starting to feel like a casual playthrough, and that's hard mode in a nutshell. On the third attempt, I got a clutch clock power up to slow everyone down, and finally finished the race. I also obtained the Hyper Speed Trophy for finishing in first while starting the last lap in eighth place. I had to restart the CTR challenge in Ruse Tubes as well due to some horrible item RNG and the letter C being difficult to get. But then something really cool happened. Your tiny is so far ahead. Oh my god. Photo finish maybe? Oh! I got photo finish! Oh my god. That's one of the hardest trophies out of the way already. With some trolling from the letter R in Mystery Caves, I finished up Hub 1 and proceeded to the next hub, and you can proceed to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the video so far. Doing so will give me ultra sacred fire and help this video get out to more people. At the start of Tiger Temple, I decided to sandbag in 8th place in order to use a juiced up warp orb for one of the trophies, and then I finished the race normally. By shooting an item at this door and using the shortcut, I obtained the Let Me In trophy. During Papa's Pyramid, I I also obtained the Pyramid Parkour Trophy for using all of the shortcuts in this track in one race, which is strange given that I got this trophy before even using the last shortcuts. 
Oh well. The other two tracks went pretty well. And then it was time for the race against Papu. Laps 1 and 2 went very well, and I went for this pretty cool skip where you can jump over the wall here with enough precision. Lap 3 on the other hand did not go as I expected since I'm not used to there being so many items here as opposed to when I play on easy difficulty. By beating Papu, I earned the Me Fast, You Slow trophy. The rest of this hub was pretty straightforward, but there is this interesting jump that I do at the start of Coco Park where you can drive up this wall for some big hang time. Definitely not developer intended, but we take those. I also had one of the most unlucky missiles I've ever seen. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about Sea of Stars. What? No way. For Hub 3, there are a lot of new trophies to collect. First up is Blizzard Bluff. By taking this shortcut, this shortcut, and this shortcut, I received the Wintertime Off-Roading Trophy. Now that's a mouthful. In Dragon Mines, I go through the shortcut without getting squashed by the minecart to get the Minecarting Trophy. And also because it's faster to take the shortcut, obviously. Oh hey, we're halfway done with the trophies already. That's my way of coping, if you weren't aware. In Polar Pass, I take the intended shortcut to receive the Arctic Hurdler Trophy. There's also a cool shortcut I go for closer to the beginning, and an even faster one I go for once I have Blue Fire. Near the end of the third lap, I lose my Blue Fire because of this. Dude, come on. Tiny Arena doesn't have a shortcut trophy, but it's still a really fun stage to maintain your reserves on if you know what you're doing. I then proceeded to defeat Komodo Joe and obtained the Komo Dun trophy. The CTR challenges and relics for Hub 3 went relatively smoothly, for the most part. Oh. Oh. Oh, snap. <laughs> That was a close call. <laughs> Hub 4 is definitely the most difficult, since every single stage here has blue fire. Engine Labs goes extremely well, and you can really see just how useful the brake turning is here. Cortex Castle is next, where I obtain the Dungeon Vaulter Trophy for taking the shortcut, and the I Know the Way Trophy for getting all of the previous shortcut trophies. I then maintain blue fire throughout the rest of the track, which is extremely satisfying, so take a look for yourself. Jesus. I didn't lose fire? Alright. Hot Air Skyway is another extremely difficult track where I have to maintain blue fire. Interesting drift. Interesting jump, even though I didn't jump. Just boosted me up. Interesting beaker. Interesting items. <laughs> Every everything is interesting right now. Oxide Station is just as difficult, but I got extremely unlucky with the beaker placement. For Pinstripe, you can actually enter the portal during the cutscene if you hold X as soon as skipping the podium animation. Since Pinstripe spams way more bombs on hard mode, it's really important that I pass him as soon as possible. That is more aggressive. Like, way more aggressive. You're sure taking your sweet time. With Pinstripe defeated, I earned the Why Don't You Get a Job trophy. Normally, I would just race Oxide right after beating Pinstripe, but in this category, you can actually skip the first Oxide race by quitting to the main menu and reloading the autosave. This puts you in front of Pinstripe's portal and allows you to access the rest of Hub 4. Now, there is a trophy for beating Oxide the first time, as well as a trophy for beating him again after collecting all of the relics, but if you skip the first race, you'll just get both of the trophies after you beat him. The rest of Hub 4 went pretty smoothly, except except for a really poorly timed warp orb that hit me in Oxide Station. You have got to be kidding me. This is a really bad time for this. Oh, at least I get blue fire back. 
The Nitro Quartz Crystal Challenge was also pretty slow, but this arena is dumb and I hate it, so it's whatever. After doing the last CTR challenge on Engine Labs, I received the Token Collector Trophy. And now for getting every single CTR token, I've unlocked the Gem Cups. Every Gem Cup contains a race on four different tracks, and in terms of the speedrun, they're exactly the same as any trophy race, so there's not much to talk about here. Here are a couple of funny moments from the cups instead. You're really gonna make me burn my mask early? This is one persistent missile. Oh my god, dude. Followed me all the way. I love orbs. I love it. Oh my god. I, I love orbs so much that I wanted to get hit by it one again. For winning my first gem cup, I earned the Booyah Grandma trophy. This trophy is actually a callback to one of the old Crash Team Racing commercials from the late 90s. You and me. Booyah, Grandma. Booyah. I decided to sandbag again in Dingo Canyon during the Yellow Gem Cup and earned the Weapon Technician Trophy for using every normal power-up. At this point, I was still missing a juiced up power-up, but I didn't know which one. After completing all of the Gem Cups, I received the Gem Collector Trophy. With all of the gems obtained, I can finally get the Turbo Track and Slide Coliseum Relics. Turbo Track is very interesting because every single Turbo Pad gives you blue fire here, although it's pretty hard to maintain due to some really tight turns here. Slide Coliseum, on the other hand, is one of my least favorite favorite tracks in the game because it has no turbo pads whatsoever. After collecting the Slide Coliseum Relic, it was finally time to race Oxide. Or so I thought. It turns out that I somehow forgot to get the Dingo Canyon Relic, so I had to drive all the way back to get it, which definitely lost me over a minute. After collecting the Relic, I earned the Relic Collector Trophy, and finally unlocked the final Oxide race. I'm just gonna restart the race. I need to catch up right now, before he starts shooting bombs. He's so fast. Okay. I got ahead- I got ahead of him. Finally, after defeating Oxide, I earned the Interstellar Challenge Trophy for beating Oxide the first time, the Yeehaw Trophy for beating Adventure Mode on Hard Difficulty, and the Galaxy's Fastest Trophy for beating Nitrous Oxide once and for all. This marks the halfway point of the run, so comment down below if you made it this far. With Adventure Mode out of the way, it's time to focus on Arcade Mode. My next goal is to finish a race on every CTR and CNK track for a trophy. I have to do Slide Coliseum and Turbo Track again since the Relic races in Adventure Mode don't count as actual races. Thankfully, I can do the rest of these races on Easy Mode, so I shouldn't get hit by items as much. After the two CTR races, I have to do the Velo Cup, Aku Cup, Uka Cup, and Clockwork Wumpa, since that track isn't included in any cups. These are pretty standard races, but I'll go over some of my favorite tracks. Hyper Spaceway is a really cool blue fire track where you go through a bunch of portals, and the turbo track at the end gives incredibly fast speed. Funny, funny enough though, I've uh, gotten more people telling me that I look handsome than I look ugly, which is, I don't know how to feel about that. Tiny Temple is another blue fire track that gives you the fastest speed in the entire game and is incredibly satisfying to pull off. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix Platinum Percent in 940, uh, 950-940? Like, no one's gonna click on that title, are you kidding me?
Thunderstruck is one of the hardest tracks in the game. Not only does it have very fast blue fire, but there are very many sharp turns and obstacles to dodge, and there's also a very tricky but satisfying shortcut here. Deep Sea Driving is probably the track that I'm the worst at. You get really fast blue fire here and then have to navigate through a bunch of spinning blades, and it really does not go well this time around. Out of Time also did not go very well, and I got stopped by some invisible collision while carrying blue fire. Electron Avenue is my favorite track in the entire game. I just love the whole aesthetic, and this track has really fun blue fire, U-turns, and shortcuts. Clockwork Wumpa is the last track that I have to do, and after finishing the race, I earn the Nitrostalgia Trophy. The next step is to do the rest of the crystal challenges of the game, including all of the Crash Nitro Car ones. Because I don't really like this game mode, I didn't practice as much as I should have. Parking lot and lab basement went pretty smoothly, and I completed the North Bowl with 3 seconds to spare. Temple Turmoil was alright, but then I had to restart on the very last crystal for both Frozen Frenzy and Desert Storm. Magnetic Mayhem was pretty slow, but I did it on the first try, and Terradrome was by far the easiest one in the game. By completing all of the crystal challenges, I obtained the O oh Shiny trophy. Now it is finally time for the most difficult trophies in the entire run. For these next few trophies, I have to do a time trial race on every single CTR and CNK track three times each. Once to unlock Entropy's Ghost, a second time to beat Entropy's Ghost, and a third time to beat Ox Ghost. For a casual player, these are extremely difficult trophies because it requires you to have a good level of mastery over the game's mechanics. But for me, these are difficult because of the repetitive stress injuries that I have in my hands. I have to do all of these time trials for the next three hours, but thanks to the power of editing, you don't have to watch all of the pain and suffering that I had to put myself through. For beating all of Entropy's time trials, I received the new Time Master trophy, and I also unlocked the Is Everyone Here trophy for unlocking every character from the original Crash Team Racing roster. Funny enough, this trophy doesn't require you to unlock Penta Penguin, who's also on the original CTR roster. I assume the developers didn't want to lock this trophy behind a cheat code. At this point, I decided to run to the restroom as quickly as possible and lost another minute. Definitely a big risk, but this run has absolutely no downtime and I really had to go, man. Safe to say, Sub 730 is going to be really close. After beating all of Oxide's time trials, I finally obtained the Gasmoxian Slug Trophy. Now I had some miscellaneous trophies to collect, and I only had 10 minutes to do so. After fighting with the PS5's interface for a bit, I went to Crash Cove to do all three drift boosts five times in a row. One, two, three, four, five, I also tried to get the trophy for drifting 15 times in a row, but for some reason the trophy just would not pop up. My next goal was to hit two enemies with a singular bowling bomb. I went to the parking lot arena and put as many bots into the match as possible and tried to hit two with one bomb. Okay, screw this. No, there's a better way to do this. At this point, I was desperate and my first strategy was not working out, so I quickly turned on two more controllers that I had lying around. But when I started the next match, something bad happened. I just need to drive to the other crash. Oh, frick. <laughs> so stupid. Are you freaking kidding me? This controller just won't charge. Please let me let me hit let me hit the, those two before it disconnects again. Okay. Okay. Cool. I was still missing a juiced up power up usage, so I went into limit battle again to spam items. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. There it is. Okay. I still needed to block a missile with the beaker, so I went into limit battle yet again. Okay. Uh. Yeah, 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 okay. Lastly, I needed the trophy for drifting 15 times in a row. Can I do it before 7 hours and 30 minutes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How does this not count? Should you try to Google it? Oh, there we go. GG. Oh, wait, wait. Let, let, let's see the platinum. There we go. GG. <laughs> At 7 hours, 30 minutes, and 12 seconds, I finally achieved the platinum trophy in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuels. I missed my goal of sub 730 by 13 seconds. Or did I? Remember what I said way back during the adventure mode segment of this run? I also quit out after every crystal challenge to skip the long podium animation that appears afterward. More on these podium animations later. Well, it so happens that in this game, you have to sit through a podium animation at the end of every trophy race in adventure mode, as well as at the end of the CNK cups that I did afterward. Each time you get a podium, you can get one of three different animations, and the one you get is completely random. This animation where the camera pans straight down and doesn't lose any time. This animation where the camera moves from side to side loses 2.2 seconds, and this this animation where the camera zooms in and out loses 3.3 seconds. I think you can see where I'm going with this. To calculate our final time, we simply use a podium time loss calculator through a Google spreadsheet. In this run, I get a total of 23 good podiums, 18 average podiums, and 17 bad podiums, totaling our RNG time loss to 97.5 seconds. And my final time is... 7 hours, 28 minutes, and 35 seconds. That's right, I have officially achieved the Platinum Trophy in less than 7 and a half hours. Thank you so much for watching and huge thanks to my channel members for supporting my YouTube endeavors. Have a wonderful day.